Welcome to this edition of School Matters. I'm very excited today to have with us Mr. George Johnson, school board member for 32 years. So welcome, George. Thank you, Joni. I'm glad to, to talk to you because we've gone, have records back to the early 1900s, 1930s, and by our estimation, I think you're the longest serving board member, 32 years. That's pretty impressive. Well, <laughs> it's a long time. Well, and what's even, I think, more impressive, a lot of people don't know, is before you were a school board member, you were on city council as a school, as a city council member for 10 years before that. That's correct. Yeah. So did you enjoy that, or why did you switch over to school board? I sort of enjoyed my time on city council, uh -huh. but there were too many politics involved, mm -hmm. a lot of personality conflicts, and too many meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, God rest his soul, Frank Witt was the mayor. Uh-huh. And he had so many meetings, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and I just, I had a law practice and I, I just didn't have time to go to all those to meetings. All that stuff, right. And uh, I, my children were, you know, young. young. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, you know, five terms was enough. And right. So I laid out for a while. Well, that's all right. Went to school board. That's great. Yes. It's to our benefit. You talked about lots of meetings. I think you calculated once how many hours or meetings that you've attended in the last 32 years. Uh, over 800 <laughs> meetings. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a lot of time. Give or take a few dozen. Yeah, right, yes. And not only, you know, the time on that, but I know you've always gone above and beyond. You know, we would see you at fine arts events, um, the top 10 luncheons at the Hamilton High sporting events, um, National Honor Society induction. So not only being a school board member, but you were very much involved and was out there to, to see the people. And well, I give you credit for that. Well, I enjoy that. I enjoy seeing what our kids are doing and mm -hmm. watching performing, whether it's uh, football or basketball or a musical or mm -hmm. a band concert. Uh, I just enjoy doing that. Well, I and I, I could tell you, you know, parents and principals, students, they all notice that and they do truly appreciate that, that, you know, you're out there and about, um, as most of our board members, I mean, uh, you know, they, they know where they need to be and I think that's part of the legacy of the board is, is to be um, available to people and, and, you know, see what's going on. That's right. I mean, you know, you don't know how people feel unless you're out with right. them. And I'm sure when you are out with them in the grocery store, wherever, they, they don't mind giving you their opinions on things. <laughs> Not at all. I, I appreciate it. Well, and again, we know, you know, again, board as a whole, you're always available, you know, phone numbers, emails, so, and that's good, I think. And, you know, Transparency. I really, I really haven't gotten that many complaints uh -huh. over the years. Probably <laughs> mostly from your wife. <laughs> <laughs> because again, we have to give a shout out to Sophie and your three children because well, again, you're away a lot. Yes, they've always been very supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, although the last couple of terms, my <laughs> kids have said, you know, you're not going to run again, are uh -huh. you? And Sophie's going, no, you could go ahead, George. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of your 32 years, I think you were president seven years and vice president seven years. So um, that's again, another step to the leadership to be a board member. Well, I, I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I've done a good job. I've tried to. Uh, we've had a great board to work with, though. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A great team. Yeah. And you said about city council, and I think that's one thing, one credit to the board. You can agree to disagree, but you guys have always done it, I think, in the utmost, you know, uh, above board, and, and it was just very nice about it. You know, everybody can agree to disagree, but it's how you how you present it, I think, that's, sometimes. That's that can, correct. And, and, that's, and you guys, I think, have been very fortunate with that. We've tried to do that, and uh, I think, I think uh, we've done a good job. And you started back in 1982, so there were two sort of focuses that you had. Um, we just got off the teacher strike, and then also you talked about the conditions of our buildings. Explain a little bit right. about that. Well, we started going around and looking at our buildings, and uh, had complaints from teachers about you know windows not being you know being dirty. Right. right. Uh, facilities were old. You know the Jefferson Annex was built in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln uh, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of buildings built in 28, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, there had been no new operating funds since 1969, mm -hmm. and to balance the budget, uh, boards uh, cut maintenance, cut back on maintenance, and the building showed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing you know, we've worked on, insisted on, at least we can keep the buildings clean mm -hmm. and uh, painted. Mm -hmm. 
And also, as you talked, you know, we had a, uh, in 1980, you had a very long uh, teacher strike mm -hmm. and it was very bitter. Right. And created a lot of hard feelings. And so. And you uh, came on board just after it was finished, so yes, you had to clean yes, up the Yes, I mess. did. <laughs> I ran in 81, uh -huh. uh, I was elected, took office in 82. I had run in 79, didn't make it. And oh, is that right? Sort of blessed, I guess. That <laughs> That's I, true, I, yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to go through well, that. Maybe they spring. wouldn't have been on strike had you been there earlier. Who well, knows? Well, I, I think that, uh -huh. that might be a point. But uh, we felt that we had to try and work on getting a better relationship with our employee groups. Mm -hmm. And so we started going around and visiting the buildings, uh, having meetings with the teachers uh, in every building, and uh, answering questions and telling them what we're trying to do. And uh, sometimes it wasn't real pleasant. I was going to say, sometimes you had um, people that were willing to listen and others, they weren't taking it, were they? No. Uh, <laughs> one bad incident at <laughs> Hamilton High, uh, I think it was in either 80, probably in 83, mm -hmm. because I was president, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were at Hamilton High and one teacher got up and he said, everybody thinks the school board's a bunch of jerks, stand up. And a bunch of them stood up. And that wasn't a very pleasant feeling. No. So we continued to work uh, to try and better the relationship. And I can say that uh, as I've left office, we have a great relationship with our employee groups. Yeah, as I say, not just teachers, but all the employee all groups. All the employee and groups. And you don't hear that a lot on with some school districts. Well, I know that. Mm -hmm. I know that. But, uh, you know, we went around this fall mm -hmm. and met with each uh, uh, teaching staff and there have been a lot of uh, mandates from the state mm -hmm. and our teachers feel very stressed right. and uh, we explained you know we, we acknowledge that we knew that they were under great stress mm -hmm. and that uh, the changes were severe and too many at one time mm -hmm. and, and it, constantly changing constantly you know, yeah. as soon as you think you have it down um, Ohio Department of Ed will, will change your mind and then it's another thing you have to learn so I, I think that made the teachers feel better that we at least appreciated what they were going through mm -hmm. uh, because it's, uh, the changes have been tremendous. Right. Another thing, again, coming in the early 1980s is merging Taft and Garfield into one high school, Hamilton High School. That was in 1980. I think the first graduating class right. was 1981. And we started with three sessions and three. then down two. So explain a little bit about that. Well. Uh, the board back then had decided to use Taft as the high school because of its proximity to Wilson. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Garfield became a, a junior high school. But there wasn't enough room at Taft mm -hmm. to hold all those students, right. well over 2,000. Mm -hmm. So they had three shifts. And uh, I know my, my son was a sophomore, mm -hmm. but he was on the swim team. So he fortunately got on the early session. Mm -hmm. But you know, you were getting kids getting out of school at 5.30, 6 mm -hmm. o'clock. Mm -hmm. That had to be, you talk about tough schedules, I mean, because then you had to oh. coordinate teachers working different shifts as well. The, yes, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 86, uh, well before that we built the Job Development Center. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Fox got funding for us from the state mm -hmm. through Miami. Mm -hmm. And uh, that helped. Mm -hmm. And then in 86, uh, no, before 86, we added six classrooms in front. Right, where the, where the glass um, doors used to be in front of the tap by the gym. That's right. Took those down yeah. and added six classrooms we to help had, alleviate some of the We had increase. saved some money somehow, mm -hmm. and we came up with that and added those classrooms. Mm -hmm. And as you said, then the Job Development Center, which surely helped, and of course now we call it the Career Technical Education uh, Building all part of the complex. And then in 86, uh, we passed a bond uh, tax levy, mm -hmm. first one in 17 years. Mm -hmm. And 75% uh, of that was dedicated to building improvements, mm -hmm. replacing boilers, uh, replacing windows uh, that wouldn't open, Right. <laughs> and things like that. Right, yeah. And you mentioned the, the 86 operating levy. Uh, again, under 
uh, your 32 years, we had two operating le levies, 1986 and 1993, and then the two bond issues, again, right. a building. So we'll talk a little bit about that later, which, again, that's that's pretty good for our community because it's been, you know, it's hard to sell that. Um, <laughs> but I think people understood the importance, as you said, even though the buildings are old, you want to keep them well maintained. You have to have the boilers. You know, there's no reason not to have clean windows. So, again, I think it's a source of pride for the community. Absolutely. So, okay, so we, we talked about some of the building. <coughs> Let's talk about your friend Virgil Schwarm. Great guy. Well, I knew Virgil through Rotary. And uh, I knew he liked sports, and mm -hmm. I knew he, he played football and uh, basketball at Hamilton High School and graduated in 1922. That's what I thought, yes. And uh, Ed Mennery had just come to Hamilton as our football coach. And I had a get-together at our house invited some people and for some reason I invited Virgil I don't know why <laughs> yeah but uh, good thought though Virgil came and he took a liking to Ed mm -hmm. and Virgil started going to football games with us on Friday night uh, he'd go to UC games on Saturday and Bengals games on Sunday mm -hmm. and uh, Virgil had a bad hip and he had a hard time getting around but he got so around. So he wasn't a young pup at that time No either. he wasn't right. he was in his 80s right and uh, We'd take him to basketball games with us. Uh, we had a trip one night, and we, we dropped him off at home. And I said, Virgil, we got a game in Portsmouth tomorrow night. You want to go? He said, well, I've got to dance at Senior Citizens. <laughs> well, we got home, and about a half hour later, Virgil on the phone. He said, I think I'm going to go to Portsmouth with you. Oh, that's great. I like this story, too. Didn't you take him home one night, and he, he locked himself out? Yes. So you had to get up to he, the second floor window? He had, uh, he said, I don't have my key. I said, well, this happened one other time, and he had it in his car in the garage. Uh -huh. I said, how about in your car in your garage? He said, nope. Uh, he said, it's not there. And I said, do you have any open windows? He's on the second floor. <laughs> I said, do you have a ladder? <laughs> so we got a ladder out of the garage, and I propped it up in that front roof mm -hmm. and climbed up there and opened the window, and I'd never been in his house before, mm -hmm. and found my way in the dark downstairs and got him in. He lived in that pretty house here on the corner of Park Avenue in Eaton. Yes. Can you imagine somebody driving down the street seeing you climb in the window? Well, we were worried about the police coming along <laughs> and seeing me climbing up on the so roof. So anyhow, so you had the meeting, and, and, and you talked to Virgil about, you know, we needed to do something. Yeah, we'd take him to different stadiums and say, you know, Virgil, look at what we've got. Mm -hmm. And he realized we needed something. Mm -hmm. So finally he said, you know, what do you need? Mm -hmm. I said, well, 500,000 would be a good start. <laughs> he and said, then he fell off the ladder, no. No, he said, I'll do it. Oh, that's great, uh-huh. He said, I want to do it for Ed. Oh, that's good. So he signed the papers and uh, we started there. Yeah, uh, and, I, and again, he started it, but as you said, you know, the whole community, you had individuals and companies and businesses all rallying to make, you know, the Virgil M. Schwarm Stadium what it is yeah, today. We raised another two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars in cash, mm -hmm. and we had uh, in-kind uh, in contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, reduced rates on, on construction things. Mm -hmm. uh, Baker Concrete finished all the concrete under the grandstand at no charge. Mm -hmm. uh, at the dedication of the stadium, uh, Tom Stretch had Turnbull Concrete at the time, and uh, his bill was around $10,000, and he told me, he said, There's, the concrete's free. Isn't that great? The uh, city utilities put up the new lights for right. us. Uh, just all kinds of things like that. See, and that's, that community pride is something that I think um, Hamilton is known for. Right. And then also, along with the Virgil Schwarm Stadium, the Bill Moeller Press Box. Yes. Uh, Chuck Thacker and I co-chaired the campaign on mm -hmm. the stadium with a lot of help from Larry Wood. Mm -hmm. But uh, Herb Nutter, uh, another Hamilton High, another Hamilton High mm -hmm. grad, mm -hmm. and he invented a part for a, uh, a jet engine, and he made uh, quite a bit of money. In fact, the Nutter Center at the Wright State is named for uh, E.J. Nutter. Isn't there a building also at UK? Yes, at UK. Yes, uh-huh. So anyway, uh, Chuck and I made an appointment to see Mr. Nutter up in Beaver Creek. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Irv loved Woody Hayes. Mm -hmm. And of course, Chuck Thacker was an Ohio State graduate. Right. And he and Irv talked about Woody Hayes for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So finally, we got around to what we wanted. Mm -hmm. said, and uh, Mr. Nutter liked Bill Moeller. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Moeller. Everyone did, right? He was a sports writer for the journal right. and did a great job. Mm -hmm. And I said, we want to name the press box after Bill Moeller. So he said, well, let me think about it. So Chuck and I drove back to Hamilton and said, you know, what do you think? Mm -hmm. said, we don't know. No. Half hour after I got back to my office, phone call, Mr. Nutter. He said, I'm going to give you $25,000 for that press box. Mm -hmm. And don't bring Thackra back again. I know why you brought him. <laughs> oh, that's good. But it worked, it right? It worked. That's good. And you mentioned you met uh, Mr. Schwarm um, uh, through Hamilton Rotary Club, of which Correct. you've been a member. And, of course, we need to give a shout-out to the Rotary Club because they've helped with the improvements at the Hamilton High Auditorium. And then also the third grade dictionaries. Every year they give dictionaries to each third grade student. Yes, they do. And being a member there, you have gone to schools to personally deliver those. Yes, enjoyed doing that. Uh-huh. Uh, seeing the third graders look at those dictionaries mm -hmm. and look at the longest word in the world. And, right. Uh, and they're all very appreciative. And again, that's just another way of you giving back to the community through the Rotary Club. So we talked about Virgil Swarm helping, you know, for the 1994, the football stadium. But really, he helped us even before then. Yes, he did. Uh, we had the, back in 1980 when the schools merged, uh, Larry Bowling and Mel Baker decided that we needed a field house mm -hmm. and they started uh, building it without any money mm -hmm. and Rocky Rhodes and Rick Banker sort of served as the contractors and they built that old field house uh, but when Ed Minery came they were lifting weights in a small room and he said somebody's gonna get killed mm -hmm. so uh, John Pont was the athletic director and between those two uh, they got Virgil to give us fifty thousand dollars to add a room onto the field house in the back of the field house in the house. back mm -hmm. uh, to serve as a wrestling room, and then they took the old wrestling room over for a weight room. Okay. So that was a fifty thousand dollar donation. That's pretty nice. So, uh, and then Virgil came through with with the half million for the stadium. And with the old field house, we called it old field house. Um, all the additions and renovations at the high school. There was a need, obviously, to use, use the space there with the old field house, so then we were going to start building a, a new field house. Right. And uh, I received a call from uh, Shelley Spillane, who was a trust officer at First Financial Bank, and she said that she had a client, uh, Irma Oaklitz, who wanted to do something uh, to honor the memory of her husband, Rudy. Mm -hmm. uh, Rudy had been a great athlete at Hamilton High back in the 30s, went on to Miami University, uh, became uh, assistant principal and athletic director at Garfield High School, and uh, retired from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the second member of our Hamilton City Schools Athletic Hall of Fame. So uh, Mrs. Oaklitz gave us a very substantial contribution to build the field house uh, in memory of her husband, Rudy. Well, very sweet lady, yeah. And it's a Rudy Oakwood's field house, and that's right. a very impressive facility as well. And uh, her donation is only second to the what Virgil Swarm gave mm -hmm. us. And so. again, we talked about it. Couldn't do a lot of these projects without the, the community support and individual support. We've had tremendous community support, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. Not only the athletic facilities, but the buildings we've built. Oh, sure. Uh, it's just been a great thing for the city of Hamilton. I agree. Okay, we talked about the Virgil Schwarm Stadium that was um, done in 1994. And um, as most of our audience knows, um, that stadium is used just about seven days a week. We have both Hamilton and Baden football on there and Hamilton and Baden girls and boys soccer. We do Bananaramas, you know, other people have used it. And we thought we, you know, it just takes one bad rain with the football game, and then really the the oh, field is messed up for the rest of the season. It absolutely was. So again, you work with Bill Wilkes to get a turf field. Right, and uh, that was 2007. I think we dedicated I, that. I think it was. Bill, uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, knows a lot of people, mm -hmm. and uh, as someone told me once, it takes money to get money. Uh huh. So you need someone, you know. 
uh, who has uh, substantial yeah. assets yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. Some nice contacts. Right. And again, it was a community support. We got some big donors. Yes, but we, then you also got, you know, a lot of people donating $100, what have you, you know, a buy a square or whatever. And again, I, I think that brings a lot of pride to the community. And to this day, I would say that stadium is one of the nicest in Southwest, Southwest Ohio. It is. And then the board, a few years back, uh, replaced the bleachers on the visitor side mm -hmm. because they were the originals, were they not? They were the originals, and they were falling apart, and they were a liability. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, again, so a lot of direction from you, not only as a board member, but also, again, stepping up and seeing where need is and, and trying to fulfill that. So good to you. Um, also, another thing, the fitness center, we have um, a nice fitness center at the Hamilton High, the new Hamilton High Athletic Center, and I know you work closely with Claude Davis on that, again, a committee to make that all, you know, privately funded. Yes, uh, I would say Claude was, was the leader there, mm -hmm. uh, being president for his financial. Right. And he, knows, he knew a lot of people, and uh, people owed him favors, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> That works. It worked. But again, you had several people, you know, with big, uh, big donations. But then you had a lot of people that would give, you know, again, fifty dollars, a hundred, whatever, and all that adds up. And now we yeah. have a beautiful fitness center yes. for our, our students it's at Hamilton High. Very, very nice. And every time we show people that, you know, they just can't believe. You know, the whole athletic center itself. It looks like a, you know, a college facility. You know, I have to give credit to, to Janet Baker, mm -hmm. because when the architects were designing the new gym. Mm -hmm. They took her plans and showed, showed them to her. And she said, this is what we have now. So mm -hmm. where's the wow factor? Yes. Yeah, that's important. And uh, they came back and redesigned it. And when people walk in there, they say, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that, again, a credit to the board and to Mrs. Baker and, and the district. You want things to look good. You don't want to overspend, but you do want the wow factor to, right. to have a presence there. No doubt about it. And we said earlier, you had three children at Hamilton High. So during that time, you were very much involved in Boosters, the parent group. In fact, I think you were president. Yes, I was. So you worked closely, obviously, with our other board member leaving, uh, Anna Harvey. She's been a board member for, for 12 years, but I think she's been the Booster president for close to 30. Yeah, forever. <laughs> yeah. So again, you talk about above and beyond. You know, that's, that's Anna Harvey. Yes. So. Give Anne a lot of credit. She's mm -hmm. a hardworking lady. She very much is. So we talked about, you know, fundraisers and facilities, but you, you get on the Board of Education because of education. And in your tenure of 32 years, you've seen a lot of changes in education. Oh, definitely. I mean, the technology, mm -hmm. uh, the courses. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give you a term. Remember SchoolNet Plus? where you had three computers in the back of every classroom, which is a good oh, idea yeah. in theory, but our classrooms <laughs> only had one outlet. So, you know, again, that was one of those things, aha, you know, an aha moment that, you know, something's got to give. So it used and, to be big and bulky, and now they fit in the palm of your hand. So and a lot of school districts are running into that now. Oh, yes. Where the, they, they want the technology, mm -hmm. but they don't have the infrastructure. Right. Yeah, fortunate. and again, we've been very fortunate. We'll talk about that. But... But even though with the technology and different courses, you know, education has changed and used to be called vocational, then it was job development, now it's career tech, you know, because we know not everybody's going on to college, but they go on to career. Um, so you, we always try to have higher expe expectation for our students. You have to set expectations. Uh, you know, someone said, you know, set as a goal, you know, uh, how high can you go? So, well, there's footprints on the moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. So, you know, people will do what they, you expect from mm -hmm. them. And you have to set high expectations. Mm -hmm. Kids have to know that uh, they have to work harder than they do. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. Yeah. But again, and that's true. One other thing, too, you said learning to read is key. I mean, you could have all the bells and whistles, but if you can't read, you're not going to make well, it. Well, and I've gone around and visited classrooms over the years and uh, during right, right to Read right, Week. Uh -huh. And I tell the kids, I said, if you can't read, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. You can't do math. You can't study science. You can't study history. You have to be able to read. Right. Yeah, that's key. So, um, and, you know, that's been 100 years ago, 50 years ago, into and, and today, you know, and that 
you know, technology is great, but there's nothing like holding a book in your hand to make, you know, but again, get the right right kind of book that a, a child wants to read. If, if, if it's his, his um, what he wants to read, he'll, he'll take off on it. So. I know uh, when my son uh, was in first grade, he'd, Mrs. Augustine was a teacher at Lincoln, and mm-hmm. uh, he just didn't have a lot of interest, and she started get, talking to him about presidents, mm-hmm. and he got interested in presidents, and he started reading, mm-hmm. and he's been reading ever since. And that's, that's, yeah, that was what he needed, was find the right, right topic, right. I guess. Another thing I think you do, which I don't know a lot of people know about, for years you've had a scholarship in memory of your parents, um, and every year you, you give that to a Hamilton High student. Going to Ohio State. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Going to Ohio State, yeah. And we started that in uh, 1984 after my mother died. Mm-hmm. And Very good. We've continued to add on to that. That's good. So we talked about, you know, the different things that, you know, changes in education, and that's constantly evolving, constantly changing. But I have to say the lasting legacy of the board when you were on it would have to be our new school buildings. We're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, As as I mentioned, we've worked as a team. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've made a lot of lobbying trips to Columbus. I was going to say it wasn't easy because, you know, in reality, I think we were two or three years behind of what we really should have been and with the board's persistence nagging whatever you want to call it up in Columbus we were able to move up several years. We moved up and uh, you know uh, we had passed that bond issue in 99 Mm -hmm. and shortly after that the state started that school facilities program and through Greg Jolivet's help Mm -hmm. we were able to get uh, the law changed to include the money that we had raised from the bond issue in 99 mm-hmm. as uh, part of our uh, contribution. So that helped a great deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, uh, when we got on the, on the waiting list, mm-hmm. you know, you're next. Mm-hmm. We went to the voters in 2006 to pass a bond issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, it passed. Yeah. Uh, and again, by, by a good margin. Right. And the, again, you, uh, you have to say thank you to our community because it was com- rough times. Absolutely. But the timing was great mm-hmm. because a year later we started a recession. Mm-hmm. And we might still be waiting today. Yeah. And a lot of districts are, you know, because you, yes. you can't, can't get the money from the state until you pass your own local bond issue. That's right. So. And then uh, once we pass the bond issue, uh, because of the economy, we had contractors bidding mm-hmm. way below estimate. Right. And we would not have been able to do everything we did mm-hmm. had uh, the economy been better. A little bit better, right. So our timing was, was great. Mm-hmm. As I tell people, we were blessed. No, very much. And it's hard to believe that our first round of four elementary schools, um, it's been five years which is hard to believe, but we still, even last week, we had a surrounding school district coming looking at the buildings because they now are in the process of of designing their buildings. So um, in the last five to seven years, we've had a lot of school districts coming to look at our schools as as an example of what what they want. You know, and the thing, you know, and going around and visiting the buildings, which we've done, Mm -hmm. uh, the kids are taking care of the buildings. Mm called pride, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't see graffiti. Right. Uh, so they, I think the students really appreciate what they have. Mm-hmm. Well, and we, the community does, as too. As I say, we did a community survey last spring, and that was um, we, you know, that was one of the questions. Um, what do you think of the new buildings? And they said, you know, 73% said it's a source of pride for our community. So, uh, you know, what a great way to jumpstart our, our community with new, new schools. Yes. Uh, you know, we received great support from this community Mm -hmm. and uh, I'll ever be appreciative to the community for what they've done. And again, I think that's what sets us apart from other communities because you don't have that, but they rally around when they need to and I think, you know, we can't say enough to say thank you to the community. That's right. So, and again, we need to say thank you to Sophie and your three children, as I said earlier. Um, You know, you're away a lot from them and um, and so we appreciate them letting you, letting us borrow you for those I have, I have a 800 meetings. I have a wonderful family, mm-hmm. my wife and three children. Yeah. 
great. That helps. And grandchildren now. And in the grandchildren, schools. yes. Very good. Well, there's no doubt, George, that you've you truly have left an imprint in our community. And on behalf of the students and the staff, we just say thank you. Thank you, Joni. We'll see you soon. And for TV Hamilton, I'm Joni Copas, and thank you for joining us today on School Matters.